On the news at 7, Governor Akere Dolu's aide Odebo Wale denies insinuating cracks in state cabinet in an earlier statement. Three health workers in Ondo State land in police net over theft of placenta. National Industrial Court again rejects organized labor's prayer to embark on strike over subsidy removal. On the foreign scene, families grieve as 41 victims of Friday's school attack in Uganda get funeral rides. Good evening and welcome to the news at 7. I am Akimumi Abodunde. The Senior Special Assistant to Governor Luwaro Zimiakiridolu on strategy and special duties, Dr. Doini Odebowale, has denied insinuating that there is a crack in the fold of the State Executive Council. In an exclusive interview in Akure, Dr. Odebowale said the State Governor, Luwaro Zimiakiridolu, is recuperating at a hospital in Germany but is in touch with the members of the council who are doing their jobs as they should. He said the governor signed May salaries of the state workers, among other documents, before he left on medical vacation. The, the man who appointed you is sick, and so what, yes? Is that a sin? Then the next thing is you are, you are, now, you are now speculating on his death. Then you are holding meetings about how to succeed, how to, how to distribute offices. Well, no, I'm not representing to say so because I mean I, I I had stories, and from all indications now, those rumors are becoming to be true because you found this silence. Everybody kept quiet. The people of the state were now kept guessing. At a time, it appeared as if even members of this administration even were the ones who were selling the room that Katie had become incapacitated, whatever that meant. To be incapacitated, according to the Constitution, means that you are not able, you are not in any position to understand anything. You cannot direct the state. And does not lie in the mouth of any appointee to say that. It does not lie in their mouth to say that. The House of Assembly we verify that situation. And if it is found to be true, then that's what assembly will act. So now what is the state of uh, the health of Mr. Governor? Mr. Governor is recuperating is in Germany. He left Ivanov for Germany to keep his appointment. There is nothing more to it. There is nothing more to it. It is clearly political. And that's why I'm saying that they are not sophisticated. Whoever must be behind this. They are just the sovereign people of the state. Now, May salaries have been paid. I mean, on those state government is not owing anybody May salaries. The governor must have signed documents. If you, are, if you believe that the governor did not sign it, re return your own salaries and let us go write the petition to EFCC. That somebody signed on behalf of the governor and you don't think that it is right for you to receive this, you know, your running grants, re return. Then the assembly will now have the 10th assembly in the state, inaugurated properly so. The clerk of the house read out the proclamation of the governor. If anybody is in doubt, there are four members of the PDP, of the opposition party, in that house. They ought to have raised it. The law does not say that the governor must be physically present while proclaiming, while inaugurating the house. So the House is going, we have a new speaker. They had their rank of free election. So who is, who is disturbed? What is not happening in the state that they want the governor to do? Is it you want to carry shovel to, to continue the construction, or construction works on roads and wherever? What exactly do, why, why are they interested in him? Why? Then after the governor finally now wrote to the House of Assembly, after his uh, travel documents, you know, became ready and was ready to go. 
He said, you know, he said, he's no advocate of Nigeria. He will not do anything like just any politician. He won't. The senior special assistant castigated some politicians who he alleged were holding nocturnal meetings designed to sabotage governance. Odebo Ale, though, did not mention anyone, but said the politicians are seeking to draw mileage from the absence of Governor Kiridulu and accused those involved of finding the embers of acrimony to heat up the polity. He enjoined those who are tired of working with the governor to resign rather than sponsoring unscrupulous elements to misinform people of the state. While saying the governor would soon resume from his medical vacation, Dr. Odebo Ali enjoined the people to disregard the antics of mischief makers. Some members of this administration were seen with certain elements. We are doing that. I became alarmed. I waited for them to issue their statements. Nothing was forthcoming. And it appeared as if they are not ready to say anything. All we were hearing was transmit power, transmit power, transmit, transfer. As if there was any issue before Akiti took it. Suddenly being sick became a sin. I became really outraged. The man who appointed you is sick. If you are not, if you are not, if you are not happy with it, resign and get out. How can there be any crack? How can there be any crack? Two persons stood for election. Akirulu nominated his running mate, who ran with him. All other members of this administration are appointees. They are ap mere appointees, mere appointees. How can that which crack? Which crack now? The man who appointed you is sick. If you feel that that, that is affecting you, you need to be seeing his, 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 his picture every day. You want him to be marking register in your office every morning before you can do what you are asked to do. Resign and go back home. Why would you want to send any wrong signal to the members of the public? Meanwhile, more groups have continued to pray for the speedy recovery of Ondo State Governor Luaru Timi Akeredolu, who is on a 21-day medical leave abroad. The latest of such intercessory prayers for the number one citizen of the state is by the leadership and workers of Akure South local government. Religious leaders from the Christian and Muslim faiths, political leaders and appointees, council leaders and all members of staff gathered at the council secretariat in Akure, the state capital, to pray for the healing of the governor. Omonola Mbeji reports. This intercessory prayer for the speedy recovery of Governor Oluwarutsi Mihakiridulu held early on Monday morning at Akure South Secretariat. <laughs> Present here are members of staff and leadership of the council. The prayer, which was laid by different religious leaders, centered on divine mercy for the governor and Ondo State in general. Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Akure South Local Government, Apostle Ojimiwe, Ben, represented by Pastor Balogun, led Christian Faithful in the prayer session. The chief imam of Akure, Abdul Hakim Yayi Akurede, also embarked on another round of prayers in Islamic doctrine for divine health for the governor. <laughs> chief 
chairman of Accra South Local Government, Benga Olani Yusei, the supremacy of God's power will always be manifested wherever faithful are praying. According to him, the presence of Governor Kredulu in Ondo State is needed at this time to continue with his good governance, which he started six years ago. We believe in the life of our Oga, who has used his position to save so many lives. Like I said in, the, in, in my other address, that we can imagine the, uh, the number of lives that will have lost at, uh, cross, at uh, the bridge along Ore. We God have worked in that area before. There is hardly in a month that would not be accident. Dito to Okala Bojute in Ikare. What of Yamotekun? Do you know the number of lives that you have saved? So, for his, his life too, in this case, matters a lot to us. We have to gather together too and pray for his life because he has used his own life too to save life. Ondo State Governor Uluwarotsi Miyakre Dulu had on 7th of June this year embarked on 21-day medical leave abroad for his ailing health. The governor assures citizens of the state of more dividends of good governors upon his return from abroad. Omori Ola Mbiji, OSRC News. President Bola Tinubu will on Thursday make his first official trip overseas since his inauguration as Nigeria's new leader. In a statement, his special advisor on special duties, communication and strategy, Dile Alaki, said the president will join other world leaders to review and sign a new global financial pact that places vulnerable countries on priority list for support and investment following devastating impact of climate change, energy crisis and the after effect of COVID-19 pandemic. The summit will be hosted by President Emmanuel Macron of France. According to the President's advisor, the two-day summit will look at opportunities to restore fiscal space to countries that face difficult short-term financial challenges, especially the most indebted, mobilize innovative financing for countries vulnerable to climate change, foster development in low-income countries, and encourage investment in green infrastructure for the energy transition in emerging and developing economies. Barely 24 hours after resigning and dumping the People's Democratic Party, seven former members of the party's state working committee in Imo State, led by its deputy chairman, Martin Ejogo, have joined the All Progressives Congress. The former PDP officials made this known during a court visit to Governor Hope Uzadimma at the government house in Oweri. According to them, their decision to join the APC was based on the governor's exemplary leadership style and good governance in the state during the last three and a half years. The Presidential Election Petition Tribunal has again adjourned the petition filed before it by the Allied People's Movement till June 21 for hearing. The court had fixed today, June 19, to commence hearing of the petition filed by the APM, challenging the victory of President Bola Tinubu and Vice President Kashim Shatima of the All Progressives Congress in the February 25 election. At the resumed hearing, the party asked for a one-week adjournment, which was turned down by the court. The party had applied to the court for a date to commence hearing of its petition against the results of the presidential election, which had earlier been delayed over their inability to obtain a Supreme Court judgment. The ruling of the apex court being sought is the recent judgment which dismissed PDP's suit seeking to nullify President Tinubu's election based on allegations of double nomination against his running mate, now Vice President Kashim Shetima. The, the party claims the ruling is necessary for it to make progress in its case because of the far-reaching pronouncements which are relevant to certain core issues of dispute in the case. Lawyer, lawyers of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, the APC and President Tinubu raised no objection to the request for adjournment as they prayed the court to adjourn the hearing of the petition till June 20. The presiding judge, Haruna Tamani, 
after listening to both sides, granted the application and adjourned the case till Wednesday, June 21, for commencement of hearing. Three presiding officers of the Independent National Electoral Commission have told the Presidential Election Petition Court that the refusal of the bimodal voter accreditation system to transmit the presidential election results on election day frustrated their jobs. The officers admitted that the results of the Senate and House of Representatives elections were transmitted unhindered and that the problems of technical hitches arose at the point of transmitting only the presidential poll results. Testifying on subpoena at the ongoing hearing of the petitions challenging the outcome of the February 25 presidential election, the three witnesses admitted that the election process went well until the period the beavers machines refused to work. The three officers had been summoned by the court through the joint application of the PDP and Atiku Abubakar to appear before it and give account of their experiences in relation to results transmission during the last presidential election. Retired Justice Zainab Bulkachua has denied violating her oath of office in her decades-long career, including her tenure as President of the Court of Appeal between 2014 and 2020. This comes amid the controversial comment by her husband, Senator Adamu Bulkachua, at the valedictory session of the 9th Senate, during which he admitted to seeking the help of the retired judge on behalf of his colleagues in the Senate. Justice Bulkachua has, however, distanced herself from the claim, stating categorically that she has never compromised her hold of office to favor any party who appeared before her throughout her judicial career spanning 40 years. You're watching the news at 7 on OSRC television. We take a break at this point. The news continues shortly. Please stay with us. One thousand. We go one now. Madam, hello, brother. Now three thousand five. My phone in your walk, we can't be blue. ten thousand. Oh, yeah. Bring your phone. Ha! Ten thousand! Ten thousand! Ten thousand! One thousand are credit. Now you're to ten thousand. Now, 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 now! All of us don't know about Globe Rekete. Ni lopo me wa nisi. Shu ti bo, ni lopo me wa luma ebra. Loli yeki eto obara. So li onwe pe Globe Rekete ten times here. I told you. Now what go tell? Abwad Multi System Hospital at Dwekiti, best equipped hospital in sub Saharan Africa, offers the following services at the main hospital and the annexes at Bashuri and Oduado in Adwekiti. Free antenatal registration and consultation for all pregnant women, free registration, consultation, and immunization for children under five years. Other services at this counted rate include open heart surgeries, dialysis, and kidney transplant, brain, spine, and total joint replacement surgeries, correction of deformities, full range dental procedures, out and in patient services, cutting edge MRI and CT scans. For further inquiries, call 081-601-60011, 080-601-86037. Announcer, Chief Medical Director. Upward, a vision in action.
Thank you for staying with us on the news at 7. You're watching us live on OSRFC television. You can also watch us on our website, www.osrfc.ng, or follow us on Facebook at OSRFC TV. And on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, OSRFC TV. Undo. Three persons working at a Morele Comprehensive Health Center are currently in police custody in connection with the theft of a newborn baby's placenta. The concerned family raised alarm after the hospital workers failed to hand over the placenta following delivery, with the situation lingering for four days now. They appealed to relevant government agencies to ensure justice is served on the suspects. OSRC's Zahid Aribisala was on a fact-finding mission to the ancient town in our local government area, and we will bring you details of the report in our subsequent bulletin. The chief imam of Usho community in our local government area of Hondo State, Al-Haji Ibrahim Oyinlade, who was abducted along the Awakre Expressway on Saturday, has regained his freedom. Reports say the cleric was released by his abductors on Sunday evening. The cleric was said to be working on his farm when the hoodlums invaded the premises and whisked him away. Family sources say, though the abductors subsequently demanded 10 million naira ransom to release the cleric, he was set free on Sunday evening. It was, however, not known if the ransom was paid before the cleric was released. The National Industrial Court has declared that the order restraining the Nigeria Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress from embarking on their planned industrial action subsists. Justice Olufunke Anwe stated that the order as granted on June 5 subsists pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice. The court in addition ordered the parties to maintain the status quo and adjourned the matter until July 20 for hearing. The Central Bank of Nigeria has lifted the limits placed on domiciliary accounts. In a statement by the Apex Bank, the new regulation allowed account holders to deposit freely, have unrestricted access to their funds, and make up to $10,000 withdrawals daily, saying deposit money banks shall however provide returns to the CBN, including the purpose for such transactions. The Central Bank of Nigeria added that cash deposits into domiciliary accounts will not be restricted, subject to deposit money banks conducting proper know your customer due diligence and adhering to the spirit and letter of extant laws and other relevant rules and regulations. The Sultan of Sakoto and President of the Niger Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Al-Haji Muhammad Saad Abubakar III, has declared Wednesday, June 28, as the day to mark Eid al-Adha. The NSCIA President, in a statement by the National Moon Sighting Committee, also declared Monday, June 19, as the first day of the new Islamic calendar year. The Sultan said during the 10 days leading up to the celebration, Muslims are urged to increase their acts of worship and ask Allah for all their hearts' desires. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, has predicted cloudiness and thunderstorms from today till Wednesday across the country. NIMET's weather outlook released predicted a cloudy atmosphere today with patches of clouds over the northern region with prospects of morning thunderstorms over some parts of the country. According to NIMET, for areas where thunderstorms are expected, strong winds are likely to precede the rains and as such, trees, electric poles, unsecured objects and weak buildings may be felled. It advised the public to be cautious, stay indoors, especially during heavy rainfall to avoid being struck by lightning. Moving to the foreign scene, funerals are being held for some of the 41 victims of Friday's school attack in Uganda. Most were students who were shot, hacked to death or burned beyond recognition near the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Ugandan army is searching for six others abducted by suspected rebels from the Allied Democratic Forces. Kemisola Ojomu reports. 
Relatives of students who were killed in Liberia Secondary School are in mourning. <laughs> They've come to look for their children at the mock. Girls were asked to death. The boys were born alive when fighters from the Allied Democratic Forces threw a petrol bomb into their dormitory. Some students are still missing. We just heard very early in the morning yesterday that the school is burnt and some students have been taken. So ours, we have not yet identified whether it's among the, 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 those ones who were taken or is, or is among those who were burnt. So we are still waiting for results. Most family members have identified the students. This family is taking the body of their daughter home. Everyone here is in shock. Back of the school, this is what remains of the boys' dormitory. Witnesses say the student puts up a brave and refuse to open the door in the midst of gunfire. Some Uganda say this is an embarrassing security lapses by the military, which is supposed to protect such brothers. There are very many unanswered questions that I need government to answer today. We have thousands of UPDF officers in, in DRC Congo in the name of securing Uganda. Security forces have increased their presence in the town. The army is pursuing the attackers who are saved to have fled into the Berugan National Park in the Noboring Democratic Republic of Congo. The Allied Democratic Forces Armed Group is based in Eastern DR Congo. Please do not panic. Our children are safe and they will remain safe. They are evil people and they are trying to harm our children but they will not manage. Right now, these mourners are still trying to process what happened and why. Kemi Salojomu, OSRC News. And now to sports. Super Eagles coach Jose Santos Pizarro says the team deserved to defeat. Sorry, moving on to sports. Super Eagles coach Jose Santos Pizarro says the team deserved to defeat Sierra Leone in their 2023 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier played on Sunday. The three-time African champions defeated, departed Monrovia, Liberia with a two-win. Sorry, I'll take that again. Moving on to sports, Super Eagles coach Jose Santos Pizarro says the team deserved to defeat Sierra Leone in their 2023 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier played on Sunday. The three-time African champions departed Monrovia, Liberia with a 3-2 win over Sierra Leone. Speaking after the match, Pesero said it was a very hard match, but the players never gave up and fought till the final whistle. The Super Eagles booked their spot in the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations after a dramatic 3-2 win over Sierra Leone in their Group A clash at the Samuel Canyon Dost Sports Complex, Monrovia, Liberia. Rampaging striker Napoli's Victor Simen scored a first half brace, but Mustafa Bundu and Augustin Carbo equalized for the hosts to send the tie into a frenetic finish. But Kelechi Ihenacho's stoppage time winner earned the Eagles all three points and qualification for the continental showpiece with a game to spare. Nigeria thus moved back to the top of Group A with 12 points from five matches ahead of Guinea-Bissau, who were top of the log with 10 points after their 1-0 win over Group's whipping boys, Sao Tome and Principe, before Sunday's clash in Monrovia. Meanwhile, at least 14 countries have qualified for the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations. This follows the completion of March Day 5 qualifying fixtures. Nigeria and Guinea-Bissau have booked their spots from Group A. The Cape Verde Island are through from Group B and Mali from Group G. The joint hosts, Ivory Coast, Holders, Senegal, Algeria, Burkina Faso, Egypt, Equatorial Guinea, Morocco, South Africa, Tunisia and Zambia in the finals that kicks off January 2024. There are three more fixtures to complete the fifth round of qualifiers and they will all be played tomorrow, Tuesday, 20th 
of June. And now to end the news at 7, another look at the major stories. The senior special assistant to the governor of Odo State, Oluwaruti Makiridulu, on special duties and strategy, Dr. Donyo Debawali, has denied insinuating that there is a crack in the state cabinet following the absence of the governor, who has proceeded on a medical leave. Three health workers have landed in police net over the theft of a placenta at the Comprehensive Health Center at Emureile in our local government area of Ondo State. The National Industrial Court has declared that the order restraining organized labor from embarking on strike over removal of fuel subsidy persists. And from the foreign scene, Ugandan families are mourning following the death of over 41 people, mainly students, in a terrorist attack carried out on their dormitory. That's it on the News at 7. Thank you for being a part of it. Good evening.